Well, hey there, it's uh, Simeon with you. Welcome back, and uh, thanks for watching this video. So here's what's going on, guys. We're in Boulder, Colorado. This is September 2013, and we just had huge five, day, five days of rain, which led to a tremendous flood, which you might have seen on the news. At times, we got one inch of water per hour, but it wasn't just the amount of rain that came down, it just came down for five days solid. And this area has mountains behind it, the Rocky Mountains, which produces lots of water coming right down on little old Boulder. So this area is under state of emergency right now. And for good reason. There's a lot of water flowing everywhere, as you can see. Now, we're in an area where I used to live several years ago in some condos here in Boulder. and. We were visiting some friends that I know lived here. I became concerned about them last night, and I was shocked what I found. Water had just poured through the bottom level condos, pushing couches and stoves outside of the condo. I mean, it looks like a, it's a disaster zone. And having been on the board of directors, we used to talk about this, but it was just another item in the agenda for the meeting, if you've ever been on a board of directors. It's very different when you see one of these hundred year floods happen. Total devastation on these ground floors. I mean, just incredible. But here's what I wanted to point out to you, and this is something we all need to think about every day. How nature has already designed systems within it to prevent such events from happening. And here's just an example. You can see this little tree here in this one word, the Wonderland Creek. Now look at what this tree is doing. This is a tree we might pass every day and not even pay attention to it. It's slowing down the water. Now I know this is one tree, but look how much it's doing to block the water downstream. Every tree that you have that's doing this, and it's just on its own, we're not even paying it, is slowing down the water. This creek had tons of cattails in it, which are now, you can see them popping up a little bit, are level, but they would also slow down the water. But here's the point. These are systems that nature has already built in to our planet that we don't pay attention to very often. They're not on anyone's line item in a budget. They're not part of our stock portfolio unless we're maybe cutting them down. They don't show up officially in our systems, almost like the honeybees. But they do so much for us and they don't ask for anything in return and we give them so little gratitude and appreciation. And they're, look at what they're doing now. No one ever paid attention, but it's in situations like this that you realize how much intelligence is already built into nature, how much planetary intelligence already exists, phrase I like to use. And I'm just asking you in your life now just to pay attention to how much has nature already done for us in a way that maybe you didn't see before, you never paid attention. Now that there's been this huge flood here, we're all paying attention to lots of things that we never paid attention to here. And anywhere we live, these systems that create resiliency and robustness and anti-fragility, to use Nassim Taleb's word for it. These are very important because they provide a buffer zone to catastrophe. And our natural, our, our natural systems have it, but often our technological systems don't have this robustness built in. In fact, they're built the exact opposite way. They're very fragile and they're very weak because we've just designed them to do one thing. Let's just look at one example. The roads, we all love to drive our cars on roads and our bicycles and they're nice and flat and smooth. They're most practically flattened as I like to call them. There are also wonderful channels for all that water that's coming down to direct it exactly where you don't want the water to go into all your valuables, your homes, your cars. We're pointing all that water right at us. If we use gravel instead, I'm just offering another possibility, it would slow it down like the tree does. The ground would be able to absorb the water and even in the home I'm living in now I was just showing a friend this morning how there's a dirt basement we were thinking of turning it into a concrete basement you know to make it a fine home the way most homes would be but I guarantee you right now a little water came in last night if there were concrete there it wouldn't be draining by this morning the water was all gone because it was just dirt dirt's very good at absorbing the water so we need to reevaluate all of our systems for robustness for resiliency and anti-fragility because they're already naturally very good at this, but we're blind to it. We're blind to the natural resiliency that nature builds in, to have multiple versions of everything, many levels of uh, uh, resiliency and many buffer zones. And it's not something we ever talk about. You, you know, we don't think about this. There's a few authors, uh, 
who have mentioned this, this uh, Taleb Nassim is a very good example of this, but this is something we all need to think about and appreciate some of these systems that are already there that maybe we're not appreciating enough. So that's what I wanted to share with you today. Thanks a lot for watching. Uh, and we'll talk to you again soon. Take care for now. Bye.